Shalom. Shalom is a Hebrew word meaning peace. But shalom is more than just an absence of violence. Shalom is living at peace, at one with oneself, with others, with all of God's creation, and most importantly, with God. Shalom for peace. St. Paul in his letter to the Romans tells us that if we want to experience this shalom, this peace, this fullness of, of contentment, first of all, we must say no by the grace of God to all the temptations received to sin. Whether these temptations are to pride or envy or jealousy, whether the temptation might be to gossiping or greed or gluttony, whether the temptations are to laziness or lust. If we want to experience the fullness of peace that only God can give, the shalom, by the grace of God, when we're tempted to sin, we must strive to say no to that sin. In addition to that, St. Paul goes on to tell us that we must put on the armor of God. Put on the armor of God by striving by God's grace to say yes to any inspiration of grace that God gives to us. And every day, God floods us with inspirations of grace. Inspirations to be kind and understanding and compassionate and forgiving. Inspirations to be generous and kind. Inspirations to give food to the hungry and clothing to our cold and naked, to provide housing for those who are homeless, and to visit those who are lonely, those who are home homebound, in prison, or recovering in a hospital. Inspirations to promote peace and justice in our lives and to promote in any way that we can the sanctity of human life from the moment of conception to the time of natural death. My brothers and my sisters in Christ, Mary, our blessed mother, despite the fact that she experienced many, many sorrows in her life, and despite the fact that she had many concerns and needs in this world, Despite all of this, Mary, our Blessed Mother, is the Queen of Peace. She's the Queen of Peace because sin was never ever a part of her life. Mary is the Immaculate Conception. She was conceived without original sin. And sin never touched Mary in her lifetime. There's never any actual sin. When she was tempted, by the grace of God, she was always able to say no to that temptation. And despite all of her sorrows and needs and concerns, Mary, our Blessed Mother, is the Queen of Peace because no matter what God asked of Mary, her response was always a yes. God invited Mary to be the mother of his son. Yes, Mary said. God invited Mary to visit her cousin Elizabeth, to be with Elizabeth to serve her in a final stage of bringing John the Baptist into the world. Once again, Mary said yes to that invitation from God. Then God invited Mary to save a newly married couple from a social embarrassment in Cana at their wedding. Once again, Mary said yes. And she turned to her son for the help that she needed. And then God invited Mary to walk with Jesus up to the hill of Calvary. 
to be with him for his crucifixion and his death to support him. As painful as that was, Mary's response once again was, yes, let it be done unto me according to your word. My brothers and my sisters in Christ, each and every one of us have experienced many sorrows in our lives. It's just part of the fabric of life. And each and every one of us, without exception, will experience more sorrows as our life goes on. And each and every one of us has needs and concerns. One of the major reasons why we're here today through a miraculous medal novena is because we want to raise our needs and concerns to Mary so she can join in with her prayers and present them to God. But despite all this sorrow and needs and concerns in our lives, we would love at the same time to experience the fullness of peace. The peace and at one with ourselves and one another, with all of God's creation, with God himself. And the good news is that we can. We can if by the grace of God we strive to do in our lives what Mary, our Blessed Mother, did in her life. So today as we continue with our celebration of the Eucharist during this miraculous medal novena, pray that we strive to make a commitment. To make a commitment to avoid as much as possible all the occasions of sin in our lives. Those people, places, and things which from our experience have led us into the sin in the past. Make a commitment to strive to avoid all those near occasions of sin. But even having done that, we're certainly going to be tempted to sin again. So pray that, by the grace of God, as Mary did, we say no to those temptations. But over and above that, to be able to say yes to all the inspirations that God sends into our lives to reach out and do good for those who are in need. Pray for the grace and the wisdom to do these three simple things to avoid the occasions of sin, to say no to temptations to sin, but to say yes to God's inspirations, pray for the grace and the wisdom to do these simple things in our lives. Because the world tells us that if we want peace, that limited peace, which is just an absence of, of, of violence, then seek justice in our lives. But the Word of God tells us that if we want the fullness of peace, that we want to be one and at peace with ourselves and one another, with all of God's creation, with God himself, and strive by the grace of God to do exactly what Mary did, to say no to sin, but yes to God's inspirations. May God be praised.